Welcome back to the Football Happy Hour. Jeremy St. Louis alongside Danny Canal, Pete Prisco joining us via Zoom. Time now for Danny's top 32 starting quarterback rankings. And taking a look at this list, Danny, there's a lot to discuss here and break down. We're going to go in the reverse order. So we're going to start with quarterbacks 32 through 23. And one of the things that sticks out here, Zach Wilson is just ahead of Sam Darnold. So, hey, at least he's not 32. What's the dif what's the difference between those two when you're looking at your last place um, starters? Darnold's had multiple options. You know, he's had multiple opportunities to move up on this le list. Zach Wilson coming off his rookie year, even from what you've seen, I've got to expect he would get a little bit better. But it was bad, and that's why I had him so low on this list. He was third wor uh, worst in the NFL in his pro football focus grade. He was last in the NFL in completion percentage. He was third worst in the yards per attempt category. Uh, he had the worst adjusted completion percentage. He was last in passer rating, and he was third, 34th. There are only 32 starting quarterbacks. There were 34th <laughs> in quarterback adjusted uh, in the uh, defense adjusted value over average category. It was not great. I thought the Jets reached for him when they selected him. I was not real pleased with what we saw last year. If I'm the Jets, I'm concerned long term about whether Zach Wilson is the answer. I just I, I did not like what I saw last year and I worry that some of the habits that were instilled in last year carry over from the, uh, year one to year two. Yeah, but you did see growth, and I thought that was important for him down the stretch. I think that's the most important thing when you look at a young quarterback. I think in his last three games, he threw three touchdown passes and no picks. And, yeah, that's not something to be overly excited about, but it was improvement. And I think that's the biggest thing for him is getting better week in and week out, and he did. Uh, is he the – you know, here's a guy on your list that's going to be higher on that list, and I'm bullish on him. I've been bullish on him. Davis Mills will be – in the 20s by the end of next year. How about that? There's something to put, hang your hat on. Davis Mills is going to surprise a lot of people uh, and become a really good NFL quarterback. I'm not going to be great, but he's going to be in that middle tier, one of those guys that you know throws for 30 touchdowns, 28, 29, 30, 31 touchdown passes, and keeps his team competitive because I think there's going to be a big leap for him this year with the Texans. We were discussing the quarterback stuff yesterday in the newsroom. I said Pete's going to be on. Davis Mills. So that's not a shocker, Pete, that you think Davis Mills is going to show that progression this year with Houston, even though their win total is not that high. The thing that surprised me about 32 to 23, Danny, was Marcus Mariota ahead of everybody. I, I'm a, I think this could be a perfect opportunity for him to get a second chance after getting a breather, sitting behind Derek Carr, go and get a fresh opportunity. I worry about the team. But I think he's got a lot of physical skills that I would like to see in a quarterback. He's mobile, he's accurate, he's a quick decision maker. And it's not like he's exactly above a bunch of Hall of Famers, the list that's behind him. He's ahead him. of Davis Mills, he's ahead of Mitchell Trubisky. So he, I think I mean, he's played, bro, for me, he's played a lot more than Davis Mills has. And I get the potential that, and Davis Mills is becoming a trendy kind of, hey, quarterback to watch out for the Texans. I worry about the team that he's on and him actually earning his way to another year starting. Marcus Mariota, I think, in, in a kind of a fresh atmosphere, fresh environment, I think he's going to be a quarterback that will uh, maybe play himself into a longer-term contract with the Falcons. Okay, let's look at the next crop of quarterbacks here. And not a lot of love for Alabama as we look at this next trio. They're some of their former quarterbacks all in a row here. So explain the reasoning and the order of, the, of these former Alabama quarterbacks? So I think, I think Alabama quarterbacks are some of the hardest to evaluate coming out of the University of Alabama because everything is always clean. They have the best offensive line, the best running back, and the best wide receivers, but that never happens in the NFL. You don't have all day to throw. You don't have guys running wide open, and I think it's a big jump for a lot of these Alabama quarterbacks as they get there. So I had Jalen Tua there 21-22, uh, kind of right next to each other. Slightly above on Jalen Hurts because he's I think he's got more mobility. I think the Eagles built their system to his skill set. And Tua, obviously, this is a massive year for him to prove it with all the weapons they put around him. But I think the concerns about his arm strength are 100% legit. And then we talked earlier in this show about Mac Jones, what we expect from him. I think the loss of Josh McDaniels is going to loom large and the lack of talent around him. I think Mac Jones would be a, a quarterback who in a system surrounded with talent could win a lot of games, but that's not what the Patriots have this season. 
Danny, 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 which one of those Alabama quarterbacks would you take over Trevor Lawrence? Not one of them. Are you serious? It's not even close. Are you serious with this? You can't rank those guys ahead of Trevor Lawrence. I had not Trevor Lawrence. Bet will be. I had Trevor Lawrence just behind them, and I would expect <laughs> he will make a big jump, but he's got to go out there and show me so that he's able to get rid of those. It? He's got to get rid of those skeletons in the closet from last year, and I know it was a how bad situation. How could you rank him this way? If you, okay, if you had to pick your team tomorrow afternoon, Danny Cannell, general manager, <laughs> are you taking Trevor Lawrence or Tua or Jalen Hurts for or Matt one Jones? season? Because I went for one season on all of these, no, which will period, explain my number period, one out right there. If we're having right a now. draft of quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence might be a top ten overall out of all no, the quarterbacks we're in the NFL right now among. Of a, that four, <laughs> that group. I'm saying for one picking? year, for one year, if I want a quarterback no, for this year. What year are we talking about? What year? Okay, we'll talk about this year. Yes, going forward, that's what I'm saying. Have? I would rather have oh, one wow, of those guys Danny. over Trevor Lawrence for this season. Long term, Trevor Lawrence. You've been this spending season, way too much one. time on the golf course. <laughs> oh, <laughs> get the old golf course rip in there. Wow. Pete coming you got Jalen Hurts Pete winning coming the in NFC hot. East, and you don't, you're down on him? Man. I, I like Jalen Hurts, but Trevor Lawrence is a better quarterback than Jalen I think so Hurts. long term. And, I think he'll have a better career. I agree. And he's better than Tua, too. Let me, uh, let me ask you this, Pete. Of these three quarterbacks, right, so we talk about the situation in Philadelphia with Jalen Hurts. Danny's not sold. The situation with Tua in Miami, Danny's not sold. If you put Mac Jones on either of those teams, would you expect him to perform better than the quarterbacks that they have there right now in Jalen and Tua? It's hard to evaluate him when you're comparing him to Jalen Hurts because of what Jalen Hurts can do with his legs. I mean, how would they play it if he's in there? And and, and I think this is a big year for Jalen Hurts. I, I'm, I thought there was real improvement by him as we went throughout the season, but there's got to be even more. He won't be the quarterback two years from now, and I think there will be. So it's hard to evaluate it. But I, of those three, Mac Jones is probably the most NFL-ready in terms of throwing the football and his ability to decipher things and get it out. But I think Jalen Hurts might have the most upside of any of them. Those three. So, Pete, would the order for you be Jalen, Mac, and then Tua? Correct. Okay. As of right now, correct. There's a big. And by the way, I'm going to see Tua on on Wednesday uh, and Thursday. I'm looking forward to it because I'm going to their mini camp. But uh, this is a big year for Tua. He's got to prove to people both both Tua and Jalen Hurts go into this season with prove it years. And if they prove it, they'll be the long term starters. If not, they'll be bench warmers, uh, maybe looking for a job on some other team. Well, certainly no excuses for Tua with what they've surrounded him with in Miami. Even his checkdown guy, one of the fastest guys in the league. All right, here's a bit of a stunner, Danny Kyler Murray. What do you have against Kyler Murray? His attitude. I need to see somebody who's going to be a better team player. Okay. I mean, I, I, I'm tired of hearing about the drama of him scrubbing his uh, social media accounts. I also would like to see a quarterback who can do it without some of his best weapons. When we get to the top tier of quarterbacks, we'll look at some guys who it doesn't matter who you put around them. They're still going to find ways to win games. We saw what happened when DeAndre Hopkins went down, how much it impacted Kyler Murray's season. And I'm worried about the intangibles. Where is his mind? Does he want to get a long-term contract or does he want to win games? You can do both, but sometimes you have to win first. The money will come later. I do think it's interesting that some of these smaller quarterbacks that we all thought like, hey, the NFL, maybe there's a new trend that, that you, you, does size doesn't matter. We've seen Baker Mayfield struggle. We saw Kyler Murray struggle somewhat. I think teams are starting to reevaluate, hey, can this be our quarterback for the next 10 years if he has his limitations? The flashes of brilliance have been there for Kyler Murray. I need to see it over a course of a full 17-game season. Danny makes a lot of really good points about Kyler Murray. I mean, look, he's faded down the stretch the last couple of seasons, and that's a concern. He's not a big guy. He gets beat up a little bit when he can't move the way he normally moves. That impacts the way they play offense. Uh, and he hasn't played as well when DeAndre Hopkins wasn't there, but who would? But he's not behind Jameis Winston hey. and Jimmy Garoppolo. One of those is an FSU allegiance. That's all that is. That's, that's <laughs> good. Garnet and Gold love. That's what that is. Uh, and Jimmy Garoppolo, you could probably trade for him. Give him a turkey sandwich. You'll get Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> right now if you want him. Come on, Danny. All right. and, and by the way, Jimmy, Jimmy's paisan, so I'm partial to him. But give me a break. <laughs> Kyler Murray is ahead of Jimmy Garoppolo. At some point. I know that, and this is a controversial topic, I know that wins aren't a stat, but you've got to give Jimmy Garoppolo some credit for going to two out of the last three NFC Championship games and getting his team to a Super Bowl. And I know that the 49ers are even looking at him saying, hey, that's not good enough for us, 
but at some point there has to be value in that. So right now I'm going to take him over. And then Jameis Winston, I, our guy Emory Hunt has him as an MVP candidate this season. <laughs> I think he's a lock for the comeback player of the year. I think the continuity with the staff and the system is really going to benefit Jameis. And I thought we saw in a very limited window last year a better decision-making Jameis Winston, which could be the difference in him playing his way back in the top 10 of this list. Jameis Winston, 150-1 to 1 to win the MVP. I just can't believe that Kyler Murray's below Jared Goff. That was the thing that got me. Jared Goff in Detroit. <laughs> Another quarterback who's been to a Super Bowl. Oh, okay. Get, right. get Kyler Murray to the playoffs first, then we'll talk. All right, let's go inside the top 12. We had a ridiculous high school highlight from Lamar Jackson in the program on Monday. Not enough to convince Danny, though, to put him inside the top 10? He's just outside. I'm a little bit worried about Lamar Jackson. I mean, you look at since his MVP season, the touchdowns have come down and the interceptions are going up. Yeah. And the more film you get of a quarterback in the NFL, teams spend all offseason preparing for you specifically. And I do think defenses have figured out somewhat how to defend Lamar Jackson, forcing him to make tougher throws down the field to the outside, the perimeter of the field. And I think until he proves teams wrong that he can exploit them, I think that's going to be a problem for Lamar Jackson. I think the Ravens also know that. And so they're trying to figure out a balance between how do we stretch the field vertically and keep our, what we do best, which is run the football around Lamar Jackson. So I'm a little bit concerned. I hope he bounces back. I hope he proves me wrong because I love him. I loved him coming out. Love the MVP season that we saw. Love that the Ravens are like, we don't need a pocket passer. We'll go ahead and embrace the running quarterback, which they've done. But defenses have adjusted, and I'm worried about that for Lamar Jackson. You have Lamar Jackson ranked behind Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins How is top 10 you? in every passing quarterback, <laughs> every How passing quarterback you? since yeah, he's been you know a starting he, quarterback. You know what he's not top 10 in? Winning big games. I mean, come How on. How many has Lamar won? How many yeah. playoff wins are we talking about for Lamar Jackson? True, true, but he's only been around for a little while. Give me a break, Danny. Uh, look, I, I think you're right in a lot of areas. Lamar Jackson needs to improve as a passer, whether they embrace it or not. This is a passing league. He has to improve. But you can't tell me anybody in this league, including the Minnesota Vikings, would take Kirk Cousins over Lamar Jackson. I don't know. I might push back on that one. I think a lot of teams would take Kirk Cousins over Lamar Jackson. You Danny, have to build Danny, you have Danny. to build an offense around Lamar Jackson. You don't have to do that with Kirk Cousins. Yeah, but it doesn't matter whether you build it around him or not. He he wins he wins a and he's won some big games, which Kirk Cousins doesn't do. And b he's a better player and he's a better quarterback. I I just uh, he's not a better thrower of the football. More than, he's not a better thrower of the this football. This one baffled this one baffled me more than anything. Uh, Lamar, 25th ranked quarterback in the league last year in yards, 17th in QBR, 37 wins in his 49 starts for Lamar Jackson. We saw on the side panel there, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, right next to each other. Earlier in the day, Ryan Wilson was on here talking about he thinks Justin Herbert might be a good uh, pick for MVP if you're looking mm. to throw a punt on a long odd. Who would you rather have today, Danny? I'd rather have Burrow. I, he's And it's hard to put your – I think Justin Herbert is – has a stronger arm. I think he's a better athlete. Um, but Joe Burrow's got that it factor. I mean, Pete always talks about the fire in the belly, yeah. and Joe Burrow has it in spades. He just does. He's got a clutch gene that you saw down the stretch of last season, that you saw on display at times in the playoffs. I think he's just got that it factor that you want to, to, to rally around, that you want to play for. From a mentality perspective, I'll be curious to see what Pete thinks of this. I think mentality-wise, he's got a little bit of Marino. Marino was brash, cocky, felt he could make every throw out there and wasn't afraid to take chances and usually came up on the right side of him. I think Burrow's got that similar mentality, that cockiness that really toes the line between being too cocky and just being super confident. He's got it in spades. Justin Herbert, to me, needs a little bit more dog in him before I'll go take him first. But they're both great. Yeah, I have a tough time with this one. This would be like a parent picking between his two favorite children in terms of young <laughs> yeah, quarterbacks. It would you, be. You, you know how 
you know how I felt about both these guys coming out. I love Joe Burrow. I said he had the fire in the belly, and I think that's played out exactly that way. And Herbert has the NFL prototypical skills that you love from the position. So picking one or the other, I can't do it. I think it's that close, and I think we have to let it play out for another year before I decide which one. Uh, you'd say, look, Burrow got his team to the Super Bowl already. He's got a leg up, but Herbert put up some amazing numbers last year, and I think he's going to be even better this year. So that's a tough one for me. I'll call it a tie. And both teams are in very, very difficult decisions, or divisions, pardon me, uh, very competitive divisions. So uh, certainly they'll be neck and neck again this year. The number one quarterback on Danny's list, the defending MVP, we've talked about Aaron Rodgers before, being close to perfect last season. He hasn't done anything to diminish that in your eyes, Danny, despite losing his top receiving weapon in Devontae Adams. I just look at the most gifted thrower of the football, the most accurate passer that we've seen in the game, and it makes it look effortless out there. Now, the one thing you could hold against him is where are the Super Bowl titles to back that up, and where are the playoff deep runs, especially with their rattling off these 13-win seasons. But I think all the concern about Devontae Adams being off to the Raiders is much ado about nothing. We've seen Aaron Rodgers do this throughout his career. Nobody really knew who Devontae Adams was when he was coming out, just like I don't think a lot of people know Christian Watson or even a fourth rounder like Romeo Dubs who they picked out of Nevada. I think we will know about them because Aaron Rodgers will make them look good. He is that good. He elevates. You could put a bunch of no-names out there, a bunch of undrafted free agents and Aaron Rodgers would take him to double-digit wins. He is that good. He's at the top of his game, making it look easy. Yeah, look, he's probably number one right now, but I can tell you by the end of this season, you know who might be number one? And I'm leaning that way? Josh Allen. Mm. And, and I was right about that all along. That's another one I'll take credit for. He is special. And what he does year in and year out to grow, I think he could be number one by the end of the season. But I'm okay with Rodgers number one as well. All right, Good Rogers. The, the humble Pete Prisco today. Yeah, right. Rogers plus eight hundred. Hey, by the way, to lead the league in passing. I get so many runs. wrong. I got to hey, hey, Danny. I get so many wrong. I got to take them when they're right. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Our thanks to former quarterback, CBS Sports football analyst Danny Cannell, senior NFL writer Pete Prisco, joining us to discuss Danny's top thirty-two starting quarterbacks. Here's the top ten as we head towards the twenty twenty-two season, which of course starts. 100 days from now, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Pat Mahomes, your top three. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.